Sarah, thank you so much for spending some time with me. Other than us talking about real estate and all those good things, yeah. I just want to jump right into a little bit about what you did before you got into real estate. Sure. So um, before real estate, I was a full-fledged, full-time teacher. Um, right out of college, I jumped into the classroom. I taught, well, I taught a mixture of grade levels, but all elementary and primary. So um, I would say the bulk of my years in teaching was about six and a half years, um, was in third grade. So that became definitely my little um, favorite, favorite grade level. And I loved it. I really did. I taught uh, third grade for the bulk of it. And it was a whirlwind, to say the least. Yes. So <laughs> as a former teacher myself, yeah. um, I can totally relate to, to, mm -hmm. to that comment. Um, Six and a half years. First of all, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's tough and it's getting tougher as the years are going on with sure. the world as it is today. Mm -hmm. um, what made you or when did you start thinking that maybe I need to and I want to do something different? Yeah, so I think a huge um, turning point for me in that career, which I'm sure was the case for a lot of um, former and current teachers, was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, it was very challenging, as it was for many. Um, going from teaching online to then teaching in person and online simultaneously, I think it was the straw that broke the camel's back, to be honest with you. Um, that's when I just knew that if this were ever to happen again, or maybe I need to take a step back and realize that I actually have been burnt out longer than I realized, um, because that was a huge turning point for me and I knew I just needed a big change. Okay, so what you did. Big change. Yeah. So of all the things you could have changed to do, why real estate? That's a good question. Um, I feel like what I was missing was some reward in what I was putting in. So mm -hmm. I felt like with teaching, um, I loved the kids. I was so passionate about changing their lives. That was a huge reward in and of itself. Um, but financially, there was no um, benefit in that case. I knew exactly what I was going to make. The next year 10 years 20 years 30 years it was capped so at that point i could either keep going into student loan debt and really um up my master up to my master's degree mm -hmm. go to principal etc but it just still was never going to be enough so i really wanted to work hard but i wanted to make something out of it so real estate seemed like the natural next step because there isn't a cap. Exactly. There isn't a ceiling. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. I hear that a lot. So you've been in real estate for a little over a year. Mm -hmm. So yes. talk to me, honestly, mm -hmm. <laughs> what that year has looked like going from the classroom to yeah. closings and just what this is looks like. If you can sum up the year. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Hard, sure. um, I started <clears throat> getting my license when I was working full time as a teacher. So that was already tough, um, but I knew it would be worth it got through the process, got licensed last day of school. Next day I woke up was my first day of real estate. Um, you know, I went through onboarding with call group and it was eye opening about how much responsibility this really was going to be. Um, I would say the first, you know, 60, 90 days was like drinking from a fire hose. It was very overwhelming. Um, however, there were so many, um, you know, steps put in front of me that allowed me to really have a relatively clear picture of where I was headed. Um, but I won't lie, the first, you know, four months was dry. Um, it was just my learning period of, I mean, it's always a learning period, but that was a, a really dry time for me financially. It was very scary. Um, it was a struggle at first. So let me ask you this, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. um, this is not on script, but um, <laughs> what did you Pull, dig to because I remember mm -hmm. um, when I started real estate, I was four months yeah. before my first paycheck, yeah. and that was scary for my family, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. And so, what did you dig to, or what what got you to be like, nope, I'm betting on myself this time, mm -hmm. and it's okay. I approached the time of whether or not I needed to give my um, notice to school. So, what Mackenzie doesn't know is, I was like, well, I could just go back. <laughs> No. I could just go back, um, although I wanted to do this full time. I think I had, my subconscious knew I had a safe blanket to go back to teaching, but I also knew that I didn't want to. So once I let go of that safety net of teaching and I just like bet on myself, everything shifted. Um, 
I no longer allowed that to be a fallback. I had a really hard conversation with you, with my partner in life, and we just made it work. And we decided we were going to bet on ourselves. We were going to do this and be all in. And once I finally was all in, things started to take off. But then, yes, they have. And it's yeah. been beautiful to watch the transformation. So anyone watching this video, Sarah, what would your message be to um, a teacher who is just knows or something else, um, is looking to maybe bet on themselves, is mm -hmm. looking to maybe just even feeling, because this is something that I felt, you and I have talked about mm -hmm. this, that, gosh, do I, I don't really need anything else, but I know that there's other things out there, mm -hmm. right? So what would your message be to that teacher or anybody in a field that they're thinking, mm -hmm. I'm in a field where there's a ceiling and mm -hmm. I want to see what else I can do? Yeah, I think that, you know, now we're kind of in a culture where self-care is really cool. I'm not going to lie. And I feel like when you finally bet on yourself and you do all of these things and you really start to delve into an area of caring about yourself and putting yourself first, it's life-changing. Um, and then the way that you can care for others is way more abundant. Um, and I think that that's a struggle that a lot of us teachers have. We feel like our career is you know, we sacrifice everything, we give it all, and the reward is what we get out of it. But we're always sacrificing ourselves in a way, and we're never very selfish. And so I would just tell any teacher, it's time to be a little selfish, uh, because you'll be able to reward yourself and everyone around you so much better. Awesome. Sarah, mm -hmm. that is, I mean, you're, you're speaking my language and, <laughs> and remember um, similarly thinking the same way. Mm -hmm. So is there anyone who's watching this video who is just thinking about a change, thinking that maybe real estate could be that career change for you? I would love to speak with you. I know Sarah would be more than happy to speak with you just to kind of see what that transition looks like. And mm -hmm. if we can't get you betting on yourself. Okay. We can stop now. <laughs> so. You want to say something? <laughs> You're kidding. I would die. Sweet Lord. I would die. <laughs> I would die. Can you imagine?